from Tech Corner TV and I would like to begin by thanking you for being here with me. And today I have for you one of the oscilloscopes with more review requests. I'm talking about the 2D10 oscilloscope from Antec. The 2 series is Antec response for entry-level low-cost oscilloscope and it is presented with two versions, with or without function generator, where in both versions you can have the 100 or 150 megahertz option. As I told you before, this oscilloscope is one of the oscilloscopes with more review requests. And after the unboxing and first impressions I made on the Mailbag Day channel, I can see why that is. The oscilloscope for entry-level oscilloscope is packed with features. I didn't notice anything missing in it, so this review may be a little longer since I will show you everything. But I will not waste any more time and let's jump into it. showing you uh, the device. Uh, the model I have here is the, is the DSO 2D10. This is upgradable to 100 mega, uh, 150 megahertz. Uh, this is the 100 megahertz model. Uh, on the left we have here a mechanical on-off button, the USB uh, socket for upgrade and save waveforms and something else. We have also function keys here on the left, on the right of the screen. The screen is seven inches. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. We have the channel output here. We have also an external trigger. Uh, it's also used this, this connector for the function generator. And we have also a signal generator for the probe compensation. In this area we have the function generator control and in this area we have the trigger control. Horizontal control with the horizontal menu and vertical control with the mat menu and channel menu also. Uh, we have here uh, the functions uh, zone with the utility, the cursors, display, control, uh, save and recall of waveforms, measure and acquire. We have also the auto set and the run stop button. What is not so normal in this range of oscilloscopes, the low entry oscilloscopes, it's the single button. FNI RSI 1014D doesn't have it, neither the SDS1102 uh, from Owen. So yeah, that's a plus. Also, we have here something that it's also some extra features. We have the factory reset button here, or default setup, yeah, something like that. We have the help button. The, it has a built-in help system, so you can uh, check what the buttons do, do. And you have the save to SV button, and this one, it's very interesting. It's the decode function. So yes, it has a decoder in it also. Very nice pack of features for starters. Uh, let me show you the back. In the back we have the USB connector for connecting to the PC and also the power socket, the universal power socket. We have a handle also and we have two feet in the front to give that inclination for better working. In the package we have, well, since I'm here in Europe, we have the European uh, power plug with the universal connector. Um, oh, yeah. We have also a USB Type-A to Type-B cable for connecting to the PC. We have a uh, 
a CD with software. I, I didn't see yet what is in the CD. We will see the, that in this review. And we, okay, we have a CD with software, a certification card, what? quality assurance and everything else. We have a package list. And about this, we are going to talk a bit more in a moment. And also, uh, warranty cards i believe that we have here something to fill and send to them and stuff like that so this is the documentation i believe that the manual the user manual should be inside the cd but one of the stupid things of this oscilloscope is it only comes with one probe it's a normal probe no, nothing special here it's a low quality probe but you cannot expect much on this oscilloscope. It's a very low price for what you get. And they send you only one probe. But this is nuts. Uh, this is the PP80. Uh, sorry, it should be the PP150. Let me open and see what we have here. And yeah, it's the... PP 150, uh, it's not focusing, but it doesn't matter. It has this uh, alligator uh, clip. It, it's not very good. Yeah, but okay, again, you are buying a low cost oscilloscope, so you have to understand this stuff. Uh, it comes already with the red ring in it. I don't know why. We have a uh, yellow and green channel and uh, it has this already in it it wasn't me that uh, put the ring there and yeah a small manual for the probe and the stupid part is you have only one probe but they give you two of these cables with clips alligator clips or crocodile clips in the end, BNC to Crocodile. I have two of these. And why two of these instead of another probe? It's completely, yeah, I don't know what they are thinking. Uh, I, I think this is one for the channel and the other for the function generator, but it doesn't make sense, really. It should have a second probe. It will be much more useful and maybe uh, a connection cable from BNC to BNC, it will be much more useful. And yeah, that's it. Let's connect this and see what we can do with it. Okay, I have here the oscilloscope ready to power on. Let's start it. It has a mechanical button. I think I, I said that before. Uh, we have here the USB for uh, data saving and for upgrades. It has a very nice touch with this uh, light in the keys. It's, it, it's, it's very good. We can read uh, the text. The camera does not uh, capture this correctly, but uh, yeah, it's a very nice detail, this uh, colored uh, keys. And let me take this out, okay. Okay, let's start by explaining a bit of what's going on here. Uh, this is a 7-inch screen uh, with some information on the top, like the trigger, the trigger mode. We have here the horizontal uh, time uh, scale. Right now it's 500 microseconds. We have the, the samples per second. Right now it's 500k samples per second, the memory depth. Uh, this is the horizontal offset dislocation. And you have also here the trigger offset dislocation. When you move the trigger, that will update Okay, the trigger line. If you see, it's moving. On the bottom, we have uh, the channel 1 information. The DC, it's the coupling mode of channel 1. The voltage, the amplitude of the signal. Channel 2, 
and also the voltage. Over here we have the information about the signal generator. I know that on the screen this seems to be uh, blue, but on reality this is a dark grey color. When we power the wave generator it will be a red, uh, almost pink color. Okay, so uh, we have here a set of function keys. The F0, it's like the menu on, menu off uh, button. And you have the F6 is like the page change button. So on reality, you can use five function uh, keys. Uh, we have also, uh, let me show you, a knob, a multi-selection knob, okay? So these buttons are clickable and we have here some functions that uh, we can use. Uh, those will center the signals and this one will start the dual view of the signal where you can see the memory depth and everything else. Uh, let me connect here the signals I have already on the signal generator. Okay. I have a, a square wave and also a sine wave for testing. And we have here the fast action keys, as they call it, uh, also with uh, this one. One note, uh, we have uh, the single key, and this key is not available on the oscilloscopes normally uh, around this low entry range. Um, for example, the FNI RSI of Nisri uh, 1014D doesn't have a single key, neither STS1102 or STS1104, it's the four channels version of the O1 oscilloscope, doesn't have this either. So yeah, it's a nice touch. On the other end, the single mode, it's not available on the trigger menu. You can only use it here, but that's that's okay. No problem there. One thing, this, this uh, going back a bit on the screen, this is a seven inch screen, as I, I think I told you, but it has a very nice contrast. Uh, the colors were, were very well uh, selected. This yellow and this bright green uh, create a, a nice contrast, and all everything is almost perfect. The only thing is this key should be yellow and it's orange, but if you see the the, the ring uh, around the channel one, it's yellow. The this is yellow. All the information around, and I will show you the measure in a bit. It's all yellow. It's very consistent. It's very well synced. It seems, it seems that uh, there is some experience in development here and everything is coherent and concise. Yeah, I like a lot of this. Okay, passing to the menus, I will go like this, showing the functions. We have the fast action keys here. With the save and recall, we, to save you just go here and you can, for example, you can save as a picture and picture invert if you want, press save and you have to insert a U disk to save. Okay, but if we do a waveform, let me check. I, yeah, you can save it a waveform internally on the memory. And just press recall. Go to waveform. The waveform number is number one. You press recall and he recalls and put the oscilloscope on stop mode. Okay. So you, you can save and recall waves and image and stuff like that. Let's see the Utility menu, you have several language uh, available, a lot of language, inclusive uh, Portuguese, that is my natural language, Poland, Portuguese, here it is. Uh, let me go to English again, Spanish, okay, we have English. We have sound if you want to, okay, as you can see. Uh, let me turn this off. 
have a key for updates, but you have to have the USB key there. You can insert some measures to check if the signal pass or fail the well the parameters that you specify in this this section. I will not uh, go any further here. Uh, doesn't right now seems important. You have here also the system info and with the, the firmware version that is a very nice detail so you can know well, the, the firmware that you are using the normal calibration you also have a front panel self-test to test everything in the, in the panel you can press the keys to see if they are working and for example no, this one is not clickable but those are okay you can press every key to see if it is working as it should to exit just press three times here okay and turn any knob to cycle through the leds okay to test the leds if they are working okay and f you to exit also test the screen to see if there is dead pixels or something like that and we are back so and for last we have the legal information this is the the normal stuff if you have a license open source license you have to include the the the, the legal stuff okay so now let me before going to acquire cursors or measures we have here the display menu with vectors or dots if you want the intensity of the line okay it takes a while to show but i think that you can see on the screen that it's almost done yeah okay you have also the grid options uh, with points in the back uh, with lines and without anything just the, the cross to divide the screen i prefer with points layer okay you have here the light of the grid of the uh, the background and the light of the screen i have this on a very low light because of if we if it is too bright the camera will not uh, capture the colors as it should be okay so 15% or something like that it's good for recording yeah so and the persist mode uh, it's useful it will drag some lines across the screen okay so let's see the measure mode in the measure mode you have a ton of measurements as you can see we have frequency minus minus max uh, the cycle and so on really a lot of uh, information you on this you can choose the channel okay it will be need to have this information uh, selectable like this okay you can sh uh, up to four values you can uh, add in down here the what you want to see okay you can change the channel for selection let's see type right now you are selecting from channel 2 it will be a green as i told you before yellow it's channel 1 green it's channel 2 and this is all across the system it's it's the the sort of this let me see uh, if you select many things it will disappear on the left side uh, the selection okay so let's put this on channel one we have we have also a digital voltimeter and let me uh, activate this for channel one it will tell you the rms voltage i think uh, no uh, to the rms it has to be like this okay it will tell you the rms voltage if you select here you can have the ac rms voltage dc rms voltage and also 
just DC. Okay, this is the normal. And it will tell you the voltage and also the frequency of the signal. You can turn this on uh, for both signals. If you take this out of the screen, it will be on the end of the screen. It's a nice touch. It's a nice touch. Okay, and that's it for the voltmeter. We have also statistics. It will appear without background. Let's see. Count, RMS, mean, max, average, current, yeah. And you can clear all just by pressing this key, okay? On page two, on page two you have uh, all measures of the settings and the gate. It's another, it's a, a lot, um, uh, some measures uh, that you can also take with uh, this option. After the measures, you have the cursors. Uh, on cursors, you have manual menu and track menu. You see here two points for tracking. If you move the line, the points will update, as you can see. Let me just do it like this. And if you do the AX, BX, with tracking, you can see the points moving and all the information is updated here. I don't know if you are noticing this little box. It's where the tracking is being done. And all the information is being updated as you move. Of course, you can do it manually, like this, both lines at the same time, or just press, just locate the first line, press this knob. Okay, you have the first line set. Take the second line to the place. Okay, set. And right now you can move and everything between the lines will be displayed here. Okay, the same for X, vertical. Okay, so you can choose where you want to signal your signal to go first line it's okay here the second will go no it will go here and yeah you can move and also you can do tracking as uh, we did before okay so yeah it seems simple to operate the cursors and finally we have the acquisition you can do acquisition in real time or Ik time, I don't know. It's not documented in the in the manuals. Uh, you you have several modes: normal, average, peak, and high resolution as normally. And uh, the mem, the max mem depth uh, it can go up to four mega. For acquisition is this. I think this part is all done. Let's go to the trigger menu. You have the force trigger key here also. Uh, in the trigger menu, you have several types, a lot of types, as you can see. Edge, pulse, video, slope, overtime, window, pattern, interval, under amp, quartz, lin, can, SPI, and IIC. So, yeah, a lot of modes available, okay? Well, uh, it seems to persist is on, I don't know why. Okay, so the source can be channel one, channel two, external, line. So let's stay on channel one. We have a rising slope, falling, or either. Okay. Auto, normal, or single, but single, you can only use the key, but that's okay. The 50% key and hold off okay so for here it's done we have also the horizontal menu that where you can uh, use the it or xy or roll modes roll modes will allow you to show the signal let me like one second one 
second. Yeah, it will show you the signal uh, variating. on roll mode but this has to be a very low timestamp and let's put this on xy let me just do a small adjustment here on the signal so we can have some animation and we have to take this to what is that it's faster let me just, I don't know. Well, did I just freeze this? It seems I did. Whoa, what's going on here? Yeah, it froze. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, let's power this on again. Whoa, I managed to freeze this. Let's just this start again. It's in a series. Okay, we should have some signal here. Auto set. Okay, let's put this on XY modes and yeah, it's not working. What? What is going on here? We have roll modes. Okay. Okay, this is good. We have a signal that is moving and that's perfect because we want to to change this to a ah. It's a, a huge bug. Uh, I'm I'm recording this the second time. Uh, the first time I, I recorded it was in Portuguese, and I did not have any issues. But well, it's not froze like the last time, but it's not displaying the the circle that should be circ working here. What? The? Auto set. I think there is a. Let me see. Ah, uh, we have the persist mode. It stayed on. I don't know why. And I think this is creating a, a problem uh, here with the X Y mode. Yeah, exactly. So if you have the persist mode on it will give you uh, bad results uh, okay let's do this up and center and this should be a circle i don't know why it isn't we should have a circle on the screen i don't have any uh, okay, a sine wave. It was not a sine wave. So here it is, our circle. We cannot have a circle with a square wave. Uh, our our sine wave rotating. And it works quite fast. Uh, on the other two oscilloscopes that I tested before, this was a little slower to work uh, i have to say the performance of this device uh, it's quite good okay let's get out of this mode and 
Yeah. Let's do an auto set again. When we do an auto set, we have several options. We can select auto range and single period, multi period. It, it, it will do uh, an adjustment here. Okay. Auto range. Okay. Enable and return. Let me just put the signal a little bit a square wave and we are back to the normal. Okay, the last menu that I have for you other than the waveform, it's the matte menu. So in the matte menu we have the I will go to the FFT in a moment. We have the plus, channel plus, minus, uh, times, and divided. And also the FFT uh, signal. On this, we can select the source as usually. Okay. And you have the center, the span, the reference level, also the scale. The vertical units it can be DB or VR, VRMS, and the window type Hamming, Blackman, Bartlett, Rectangle. This one it's cool. Let's open this a bit. Show only. We can show also the signals be, uh, behind this, okay, or not. Auto scale of the signal. And you, on the page two, you have the, uh, oh, sorry, page one, we were on the page two. Okay, that's it for FFT. It seems fast to, to respond. Well, not a high-end oscilloscope fast, but yeah, acceptable. You can work with this. Seems okay. Quite pleased with this. Yeah. Okay, let's take this out of the screen and matte menu off. So the final, uh, uh, before that, on, on here in the center we have also a default set setup. It will bring the oscilloscope for default values. It's not like a factory default but it will set the oscilloscope with a, a range of values that will take you to a safe place if you messed the mess up with well with the settings you have also uh, something interesting that it's not normally present on these uh, low end oscilloscopes i think it's the help key you just press the key you want to know what it is and the system will tell you what it's for okay so every key has a help okay and that is cool if you are starting, for example, force trigger button, the trigger seems force to generate, and then, yeah, it's cool, it's cool, horizontal button. And, yeah, let me just take this out. I didn't show you the button, well, I showed you before, but you, you can have a, a zoom uh, on the signal, okay can move in the memory and you can see this piece of uh, memory zoomed down here okay as you can see this is the all memory and this is the part that you are watching okay back to the buttons on the top you have here a button to save to USB. I don't have any USB there, so it will not. And you have here a very nice feature. It's the decoding. For decoding, you have Word, Lin, CAN, SPI, or IIC. And you have here the label. You can choose which channel you are decoding. The idle level, high, low the position of the label you can change this position if you want to okay right now it's what it's on the bottom but you can position on the screen where you want 
And yes, you have also the custom baud rate, the baud, baud user, and yeah, let's put this again on zero. Oh, I changed this and now, yeah. And the parity, none, odd, or even. The data bits, five, five, six, or seven, five, six, seven, or eight. And monitor or sync decode. Okay. Let me just, okay, default. As you can see, the default just set everything to a default state and yeah only one thing missing it's the bursts and uh, wave generator let me just disconnect this channel and take this cable to the wave generator output okay the wave general generator output right now it's arbitrary let's put this on a sine wave uh, one kilohertz amplitudes yeah it seems okay no modulation right now but we can uh, put some modulation am fm okay it doesn't have the fs key or psk but anyway, this is awesome for this price. And yeah, return, no modulation, impedance. Yeah, it seems okay. So this is being generated by the internal uh, uh, wave uh, or function generator. We can change the signal let me just come here to the we can open the amplitude let's let's uh, open up to okay the amplitude of the sig generated signal it can go up to seven volts okay and we have also a fine amplitude that will change with a more detailed uh, precision instead of just go in that uh, decimal house we have also offsets and yeah and I should say that uh, the FNI RSI of Nisri uh, 1040D is also has a function generator but it's fixed to 2 point volts 2.5 volts and you cannot change the amplitude so this is a big uh, extra to be honest this one it's a function a real function generator the other one only creates some signals you cannot change any parameters but here you can change a lot of parameters you have offset amplitude the frequency and yeah you even have the impedance dirty cycle on square waves uh, yeah you have modulation also yeah, this is really 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 nice okay let's put this fm for example am square wave and ramp we have the yeah it, it's awesome just awesome um i don't know i'm really impressed with this Okay, you have also the bursts uh, with the number of cycles. Let's put this in infinite. The count, okay, and the trigger. So, yeah, this is the burst menu. It's, it's another function you have here. Well, I should say now that I will uh, connect this to the PC and let's see how this works with the software. But until now, I'm really, really pleased with this purchase. And I don't know if I, I'm gonna give, give away this or not, because it is a really nice unit I have here. I'm quite impressed with it. And yeah, yeah, very nice. 
uh, it's a bargain for the price to be honest i liked a lot of the owen and i still love the owen uh, the easiest to work it's the fni rsi of nisri but this one uh, it's the most complete of the three and yeah i think it, it takes every good point of the other two and yeah quite impressed okay let's see this on the pc i will do a conclusion in the end okay guys i have the software here on the screen as you can see the signal is a bit uh, pixelized uh, the way this works is by coming here as you can see in the image the run stop button always blinking uh, what he does is captures the data runs a little bit more and captures again the data and so on and gives you this animation well it's not perfect but it seems to work uh, it works better than the software from the owen sds uh, 1102 and FNI RSI 1014D doesn't even have uh, this kind of solution. So I think this one uh, does the job. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, you have here the acquire menu with the, you can even have, for example, the, let me see. Okay, I've messed, messed the values up. Let me just put this back again, and we can have a XY mode. Yep, almost there. Yeah. Okay, so we have a circle on the XY mode, and we can have all of these at the same time, and even with FFT also on. And we have cursors if we if you want to uh, the counter the xy setting uh, acquire mode yeah it's quite complete um, I, I you can drag the signal to one place or the other let me just to make this a little bit faster to take this off and also the y, x y mode and yeah it does the job to be honest well if you cannot ask more than this for the price you are paying for this oscilloscope you have everything quality might not be top notch but it's good it's good it's usable and yeah this seems quite interesting to change the for example the amplitude you have a drop down you can change the voltage that you want for example one volt two volts the coupling is selected here and you have also the attenuator here for channel one channel two you have here the mat channel the mat functions uh, if you want dots on the screen or vector we have here uh, uh, well a bug you cannot uh, see the the functions that are below this the the, the fields that is uh, well it's a pity because we cannot use this as it, it is supposed to and yeah the trigger menu i don't know setup trigger Okay, you have here a very complete trigger menu. It, it is easy to work then on the oscilloscope because you on the oscilloscope you have two pages while here you have everything on one page and you just need to set up what you want to. And yeah, it seems really, really cool this trigger setup and you can also do here the trigger normal or uh, normal or auto uh, the single trigger and you have the channel one channel two and external for for the edge trigger okay you have the right slope the the false slope or either and also the cursors are here 
you can move the cursors easily. You have the, the values here on the bottom. You can see there on the monitor of the oscilloscope, uh, it will not appear. So this is then at the software level, not on the hardware level on the on the oscilloscope. And yeah, this seems nice. Okay, put one here and take the other one to here. And you have there the values, all the values. It's a simple software. It's not very efficient, but it does the job. If you want to take some pictures of, of a save a image normal, you can, you can save an image. Yeah, it will give you some options. Okay, application look, you, you have several profiles for look in the application. You just have Chinese or English. And yeah, that's it. Let me show you a waveform creator that is also uh, supplied with the oscilloscope. Okay, uh, this one is the waveform editor, uh, or wave editor, as they call it. It's an arbitra arbitrary function generator wave editor. So what does this mean is that you can draw your own, uh, well, waveform as you wish. Okay, you can do whatever you want in the waveform. And then go here and take a look on the oscilloscope. Let me just change the cable. Okay, I will connect here to the oscilloscope. Okay, as you can see. And right now we are going to save. And hmm, what happened here? Hmm. This should be with a new waveform. I just did it on. Uh, okay, my bad. Okay, we just send to USB one. You choose arbitrary one, and as you can see here on the oscilloscope image, our waveform is on the screen. It's pretty easy to, to draw a waveform. Let's take this as an example. And with the pencil or whatever, we can do the alterations that we want to. Okay. Okay, let's send this to the oscilloscope again and we have a new waveform on the oscilloscope so this is pretty neat and yeah i don't believe my rigel i don't know i'm talking but uh, i didn't install all the software from the rigel but i don't know if they have this software and this is pretty neat to create uh, arbitrary uh, waveforms Okay, let's wrap this up. Uh, I will now say what I think about this oscilloscope and let's end this video because it's already a bit long. And now it's that time that you ask, Hugo, what the hell are you doing here? What do you think about this device? Yeah, what I could say to you is, what the hell, man? What a awesome oscilloscope. Yeah, this is... Uh, a device that I bought. It was not offered for review. I bought this device, I paid myself, and I could say that this one is the one of the most complete oscilloscopes, uh, low entry oscilloscopes, of course, I'm not talking about middle range or high range oscilloscopes. For these low cost entry level uh, oscilloscopes, it's the most complete oscilloscope and also with the, it seems to have better performance. For example, on FFT, it seems to be faster and also on XY mode. And yeah, it was a really, really good experience. I have to thank you all that recommended me to, to get one of these and to do a review on it because yes, it is an awesome unit totally recommendable 
and I will do a, 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 compare, a comparison video between this one, the FNISRI 1014D of FNI RSI and the Owen SDS 1104 because I have the 04, nor, not the 02 with the two channels, but the, the features are the same. I will do a video very soon, one week or so. Yeah, it is amazing. Uh, and I have... I really thank you all of you that recommend them this uh, recommended this device and I paid in euros about uh, 193 euros for this uh, this is the 2d10 it has of course the wave generator you can buy for more or less 150 euros uh, the the model uh, without the function generator it's about the same price that the SDS 1102 and about the same price of the FNIRSI uh, 1014D but the FNIRSI has the function generator the great difference about the function generator between these two units is this as for example uh, you can change the amplitude you have modulation you can change the offset you can well you can do anything like on a real function generator well this is a real function generator but a dedicated function generator and it is pretty amazing uh, another thing that you have here uh, as i told you before none of the other two oscilloscopes that i talked before have uh, the single button it seems a uh, non-important uh, detail, but it can be quite annoying if you need to work with a single a lot to go to the menu and activate single trigger and everything else. And this is a nice detail. Another nice detail is the decode, the digital decode function where you can use it to debug uh, communications uh, on WART, uh, SPI, IIC, LA, uh, LIN, well, uh, several of uh, protocols. It is very complete. It has a lot of trigger modes. And yeah, I'm really uh, amazed with this. For a low entry oscilloscope, Hantech really wants to grab a lot of the market. They already had uh, oscilloscopes with a low price, but this one beats everything, really. And I'm quite impressed, quite impressed with this. Again, this is not a sponsored video. I paid this and this is total impartial opinion. Not that the ones that were offered for review aren't, but yeah. So yeah, that's it. I will have a video comparing this, as I told you, and I will do a second video where I will open this, do a little teardown and also uh, answer your questions about this device. So if you have questions that you want to, to me to answer, leave it on the comments area because I will uh, answer you and put it on the new video, a follow-up video of this review. If this video was useful to you, please give a thumbs up, uh, hit that like button, and if you didn't already, please consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to hit that bell so you can be the first one to be notified every time I launch a new video. That's it for today. I hope to see you on my next video and probably will be something with this and FNI or an, eh, I don't know, something cool for sure. So thank you for staying until the end and I hope to see you in my next video. Cheers.